So more and more people are becoming obese and overweight. So why do you think it's now so difficult to maintain a safe and health weight? Okay, weight maintenance is a different thing than weight loss. Mm -hmm. So what we know is that what people can do to achieve weight is actually a little bit different than what people might need to do or can do in order to maintain weight. Which is really interesting because most people just think about losing weight constantly as opposed to that maintenance phase. Yeah, that's exactly right. So what we know is that virtually any diet will allow you to lose weight. As long as you're not taking in enough energy and you're expending too much energy, your body is going to be in a position to lose weight. Yeah. So, you know, it's why all sorts of like cabbage soup diets and things like that are really effective is because they've got very, very low energy. Yeah. So if you're not putting enough energy into your body, your mm -hmm. body is going to expend a lot of energy and you're going to create a negative energy balance and you're going to lose weight. That's fantastic. It will create weight loss. What that doesn't do is create a... a a lifestyle, a style of eating that promotes weight maintenance. There's a difference between the two. So what happens when people experience weight loss and they try to maintain that weight loss for a longer period of time is that potentially the body can start to fight back a little bit. Okay. So what we know is that there's adaptive mechanisms that happen as a result of weight loss that kind of make weight maintenance a little bit difficult. So I think the statistics kind of suggesting that only about 18% of people manage to maintain weight loss. Mm -hmm. So there's like a really large study in, in the States that's been happening over a long period of time, kind of suggests that 83% of people regain weight once they've lost it. Wow. And in some cases go beyond their previous level. Which links into the yo-yo dieting and exactly. then this whole obesity epidemic because people have these great goals um, and they're just not achieving or maintaining them. Mm, that's exactly right. So. I mean, some of the things that maybe people need to do is, number one, have a, have a reasonable expectation of what they can experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if someone has gone from being massively morbidly obese into having an idea in the head that they want to be incredibly lean, incredibly small, it might not be realistic. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the body might not actually allow them to get to that level safely or comfortably, let's say. So what would be realistic? Um, it's difficult for people to maintain anything above 10% 10, above 10 of their initial body weight. There's, as, as maybe and that's scientifically shown. Scientifically shown. So that previous research I was spoke, speaking about is that 10%. Yeah. Um, that 83% is you know, representative of the 10% weight loss. Okay. So once we start going beyond that 10%, it seems to be more difficult. Um, the, the body just adapts to that different state, that different body weight state. Yeah. So um, people expend less energy. So you, you hear about starvation mode. Mm -hmm. That starvation mode... Um, doesn't technically exist, but what we experience is something called adaptive thermogenesis. And adaptive thermogenesis is the idea that we expend less energy during activity than what a person who is of normal weight would do. So once you've dropped weight, yeah, once you drop. So let's say I weigh eighty kilograms, yeah, and let's say I've lost twenty percent of my body weight over a long period of time, and I'm maintaining a new eighty kilograms. Yeah, I would expend less energy doing certain activities than what somebody who would normally be eighty kilograms would do. Uh, Does that make sense? Yes. So there's been some sort of adaptive response, and that tends to ex experience. You tend to experience it, sorry, uh, during low intensity activities. Yeah. So when you're going for a walk, when you're going to the shops, you're going to burn less energy than what somebody who would normally be that weight would do. Would burn, but in a higher intensity workout, like a high interval training or hit workout, then you would burn more similarly to a person who was 80 kilos. That's exactly right. Okay. So. High intensity exercise, so interval training, resistance training as well. Yep. Your, your metabolism, if you want to call it that, is, is equivalent to somebody, for the most part, who's naturally been that weight. So you'll burn more calories. It's during the lower intensity activities that you'd burn less. Okay. So if you had someone come to you and they were asking your best advice to actually lose weight, what things would you suggest? I would probably say it's more than just the food. So that was uh, another question of mine. <laughs> There's a big um, debate whether it's exercise or nutrition, and you think it's more than just the nutrition. Mm, it's a combination of the two. So it's a combination of the two, as well as um, looking at you know your, your friendship group and and, and, and your, your partners and your family, uh, and looking at the whole dynamic and the interplay between the, 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 the three different factors. So what I mean by that is allows you to burn calories. Mm -hmm. right? um, Eating food, uh, eating less food than you burn, uh, allows you to, to, to create a negative energy balance in combination with the exercise. Yeah. What we have to look at is how the two things can work with each other. Mm -hmm. So if you go on an exercise program, and the research has demonstrated this, people, without actually giving them any sort of dietary intervention, tend to start to eat a little bit better because they're exercising. 
So you know, the exercise creates that positive mindset. You feel like you're doing something good. Oh, you know, I might just do a little bit better today as a result of that. This is why, as a trainer, I love movement and exercise because one hour in a week can ripple effect so much of somebody's life mm -hmm. and behaviour. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. So the, the exercise complements the diet in terms of its energy expenditure. But if you think about energy expenditure as something that's happening over 24 hours, mm -hmm. you know, we're burning energy constantly. An hour of exercise is not going to, in the grand scheme of things, not going to make a massive difference to the amount of energy you're expending. Yeah. What it can do, though, is it can create the sort of sensation of feeling good about yourself. It can create motivation. It can create goals. You can see improvements. Mm -hmm. And it has like a rippling effect elsewhere, like you mentioned, in terms of your lifestyle. So people might eat a little bit better. They might you know, resist going out and having a few more drinks on the weekend and stuff like that. So it, it translates over from just the exercise. And same with the diet. So some research that I did suggested when people, I asked them about exercise, they said, you know, well, I've gone out for a run today, so I don't really want to go and eat a cake at night. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's that effect. So exercise is multifaceted. It burns energy, but it translates over because people don't necessarily want to reduce the, the, the beneficial effect of that exercise. What exercise can also do, though, is um, give some people the, the, the ability to be flexible with their dieting. So something that we, we, we know that people who are really able to maintain weight loss mm -hmm. is they develop the ability to be flexible. So they develop the ability to have something called flexible restraint. Yeah. So restraint creates weight loss. Yeah. Flexible restraint allows us to maintain weight. Okay. So flexible restraint means that, you know what, if you want to have a, a treat at the weekend or you want to go out for a drink, you can do and it's not going to necessarily create that all or nothing thinking that you mentioned earlier on. Yeah. It's that all or nothingness that creates problems. And that all or nothingness is linked to perfectionism, is linked to, um, is linked to binge eating, it's linked to uh, rigid restraint. It, it's something that we don't necessarily, it's a, it's a thinking process that we want to try to mitigate and, yeah. and reduce. You know. so